Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Tesla's future smaller vehicle, the latest for full self-driving, Tesla buying a mining company, the Model Y winning best luxury SUV, and more. So let's get into it. First up today, we have a few updates about batteries, which we know are a crucial part of the future of electrification. Recently, it was revealed that Panasonic is planning to build a battery plant in the US specifically to supply batteries for Tesla. They're looking at a number of US sites, and Oklahoma in particular is one they are looking at since it's close to Tesla's new Giga Texas. This is where they will build the Cybertruck, and the article says, quote, with the new batteries, Panasonic aims to supply Tesla's new Cybertruck and other vehicles. This would mean that Samsung would be building Tesla's new 4680 cell architecture, which they have been testing for some time now. Just a few days ago, though, it was reported that Tesla has directly asked Panasonic to speed up the development of their 4680 cells. A quote from Panasonic's chief financial officer said that Tesla is pushing for faster development of these cells, and he added, quote, we can't say more than what has been released, but we are getting many requests. We're seeing continued strong demand from Tesla for 2170 batteries, but also for faster development of the 4680. 4680 cells are crucial for Tesla expansion in the future, but especially crucial to power the Cybertruck, which will need a very large number of cells if they want to actually achieve that 500 plus mile range that they have talked about. Tesla has been clear that while they will be making their own battery production lines, they are simply to add on top of the cells they buy from suppliers. If you look into their demand for the future, it's clear that if they were to ever cut out suppliers entirely, it would be very, very far into the future. Regarding 4680 development though, Tesla's former 4680 battery cell production engineer, James Gerberman, has been named Vice President of Manufacturing at the American Battery Factory. They said, quote, James brings to American Battery Factory incredible perspective and front row experiences in evolving battery cell technology and is the perfect complement to our team as we begin our journey to develop a domestic battery manufacturing ecosystem that will make energy independence and renewable energy a reality for the United States. American Battery Factory, or ABF, is working to develop the U.S.'s first network of lithium iron phosphate, LFP battery battery cell gigafactories. They are looking to eliminate industry shortages of these battery cells, especially since they do not require nickel or cobalt. Tesla already uses these types of battery cells in their standard range vehicles. Herberman himself said, quote, I am inspired by ABF's mission to develop a domestic supply chain for LFP batteries. Prior to battery manufacturing comes the raw materials, though, and Elon Musk has been especially vocal about this lately. In a recent interview at the FT Future of the Car conference a couple days ago, Elon was asked about the possibility that Tesla will by a smaller but established automaker considering Tesla's high valuation. Elon was clear that this isn't in their plans, but when asked about buying a mining company for raw materials, he said, quote, it's not out of the question. We will address whatever limitations are on accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. It's not that we wish to buy mining companies, but if that's the only way to accelerate the transition, then we will do that. Tesla has talked about getting into the lithium mining business multiple times in the past, and now it's becoming even more clear that Tesla is having to do everything they can to secure raw materials down the line. Lithium prices are around 400% higher since Tesla's battery day, where they talked about it initially, so now they are likely even more motivated in that space. Previously in 2014, Tesla tried to buy a lithium startup, but the deal ultimately failed. Things are much different for Tesla this time around, so it's definitely a real possibility, but might not come for some time. Next up today, at that same FT Future of the Car conference, Elon Musk was asked about a future smaller Tesla. Tesla themselves announced announced their plans for a $25,000 EV in the future back in 2020 at Battery Day, and this would be enabled with 4680 cells. It would also seemingly be smaller than any cars they have made given the cost. Most have expected this to be a hatchback design since this can be effective, and Tesla posted a render of a smaller hatchback when recruiting for the design department in China. However, recently when asked about that car on earnings calls and interviews, Elon has sort of shifted his attention away from that car to a robo-taxi. Elon's quote at the Cyber Rodeo was that quote, there's going to be a a dedicated robo-taxi that is going to look quite futuristic looking. He expanded on this further on Tesla's earnings call, saying they are looking to bring a dedicated robo-taxi with no steering wheel or pedals to market in 2024. Quote, I think it can be a very powerful product where we aspire to reach volume production in 2024. I think the robo-taxi really will be a massive driver of Tesla's growth. The point he was really driving home with this robo-taxi though was the overall cost and how cost of operation and ownership for this vehicle would be cheap 
cheaper than any other form of transport. He didn't say this directly, but it seems like in his mind, this robotaxi would entirely wipe out the need for any $25,000 EV, as the robotaxi would be far cheaper to own. Quote, look at some of our projections. It would appear that a robotaxi ride will cost less than a bus ticket, a subsidized bus ticket, or a subsidized subway ticket. This has excited many and disappointed others, but the big factor here remains that Tesla needs to achieve full self-driving for this to occur. Their system, which has taken a long time to get going and continues to improve but gets delayed, needs to be flawless before a dedicated robotaxi can exist. In that case, Tesla would likely need to go with a car that can be driven at a cheaper price point. At that forum, when asked about a smaller Tesla in the future, Elon first said, quote, this is not some forum for roundabout product announcements. But then he followed that up to say, there's some probability that Tesla will do a smaller car than the Model 3. Um, but I won't say more than that. What's interesting here is that this could be referring to the robotaxi or to the design of a $25,000 EV. Looking realistically at price increases in the past year, that $25,000 entry point might still be lower than they can achieve for a smaller vehicle, but time will tell. Either way, when Tesla announced a $25,000 EV at Battery Day, it led to a lot of people excited. I was extremely excited and couldn't wait for this car to come to be, but it's becoming more clear that what we thought that vehicle would be may not be. Tesla hasn't been actively working on the $25,000 EV because they're focused on the Cybertruck, scaling their current cars, navigating supply issues, and ensuring battery supply for the cars they are already selling out of. In fact, their current cars, prior to any cheaper vehicle, which would be very popular, are so in demand that Elon Musk said Tesla is planning to stop taking orders past a certain point. A Model Y can be over a year wait and a Model X can be longer, meaning that car can change a lot in the time between people ordering and taking delivery. The pricing is also Tesla's prediction of how much their cost will be to make that car in a year with shortages and rising raw materials cost. Right now, according to Elon Musk, there is some probability that Tesla will make a car smaller than a Model 3 in the future. I personally think this will end up being one of two vehicles, and that will be determined as things develop in the coming years for a full self-driving. I'm leaning towards them eventually making a hatchback like has been rumored that will come in 2024, 2025, or later. It will likely be closer to $35,000 in the real world, but lower would be fantastic to see and could be possible with much more plentiful battery supply by them hopefully possible. On the other side of things, Elon likely wants that car smaller than a Model 3 to be the robotaxi. It makes the most sense long term and he sets ambitious goals. However, if Tesla never makes an affordable EV that people can actually drive, it will disappoint many. Either way, it doesn't seem like that $25,000 cheap Tesla is going to be exactly what people expected. Next up today, another quick update about the Cybertruck that Elon talked about at that same conference. When asked, quote, is there a risk that you lose the pickup segment to Ford, GM, and Rivian if you don't launch the Cybertruck or get it to market soon? He simply answered, no at first and then stopped there, but then went on to add, there's more orders for Cybertruck than we could possibly fulfill for three years after start of production. This is something that's really important for people to realize in the future, and it's a big part of the reason people want to see the Cybertruck sooner rather than later. This is the case with all electric trucks, and Tesla has a massive amount of orders for the Cybertruck. It will take them more than three years to fulfill current orders and get that truck to be available for new orders with any reasonable lead time. In the time we wait for the Cybertruck to launch, Rivian still has to ramp up production, and they are currently targeting 25,000 for this full year. That's a really great thing to see from a new company, but it's very low considering overall EV truck demand. The Ford F-150 Lightning is just starting first deliveries, but also will take considerable time to scale. Elon sees this along with their own backlog of orders and isn't worried that they'll be wiped out for electric trucks. That's his point here, but it also points to the fact that getting an electric truck will be significantly difficult for the years to come. Next up today, a huge announcement regarding superchargers in the US came from Elon Musk at that FT Future of the Car conference. Tesla uses their own proprietary connector, whereas most brands utilize CCS for fast charging in the United States. This means that all Tesla superchargers currently in the US use Tesla charging connectors exclusively. In July of last year, Elon Musk said, quote, we're making our supercharger network open to other EVs later this year. This worried many since superchargers can already be backed up and Tesla is selling tons of cars each quarter, but they have taken this very slowly. They first opened in other countries where superchargers actually use CCS. This makes it very easy for other 
other EVs to plug into these chargers. But as Tesla plans to open their supercharger network to all EVs in the United States in the future, some solutions will need to be in place. Converters and potentially longer charging cables will be needed if a non-Tesla is to use a Tesla charger. And Elon talked about this specifically, saying, quote, it's a little trickier in the US because we have a different connector than the rest of the industry. But we will be adding the rest of the industry connector as an option to superchargers in the US. Back in December, Tesla applied to install superchargers in Texas with CCS connectors, and this could lead to them making future charging stalls with both CCS and their own connector. They have done similar in other countries. This would make a lot of sense if Tesla plans to open up their network in the future, as Elon Musk says, but it does beg the question. Even though Tesla's own charging connector is smaller and easier to use, why not switch to CCS at this point? Everyone else is using CCS, third-party charging networks are using CCS, and now it kind of feels similar to Apple holding out on USB-C in favor of lightning cables. It may be easier for Tesla to switch, but for now in the US, their cars ship with their proprietary connector, and they may add CCS to superchargers as they open up chargers to other EVs. Regarding charging and Tesla dropping their mobile connector from future orders, we already know that they've added the option as part of the order configurator for $200. For a while, it wasn't in stock, but it's back in stock on Tesla's website for $200 with the normal adapter. The package that includes the NEMA 1450 adapter is still out of stock for now. Next up today, the Model Y has won the US News Award for Best Luxury Electric SUV. They say, quote, among luxury electric SUVs, the Tesla Model Y is a top option and our best luxury electric SUV for 2022. It boasts a strong range for the segment and it can seat up to seven passengers, despite having exterior dimensions that are smaller than its larger sibling, the Model X. It also boasts lots of the tech features that Tesla is known for. Great to see Tesla getting recognized for the Model Y, which is a fantastic and incredibly popular vehicle. It's in the luxury category for its features, but especially its price tag of $62,990 to start. For the best electric SUV, non-luxury, US News awarded the Kia EV6. For the EV6, they say, quote, despite its low and sleek exterior design, the EV6 has a spacious interior, not to mention silent and swift propulsion thanks to its electric powertrain. It also boasts athletic handling capabilities and an upscale interior. With a base price of $40,900, the EV6 is a well-rounded vehicle and the winner of our Best Electric SUV Award for 2022. They also named it the Best Affordable EV, and many would agree with either that or its sibling, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. The Lucid Air won Best Luxury Electric Car Non-SUV. Next up today, full self-driving is clearly a large part of Tesla's future focus. Elon has talked about this for a long time, speaking of the local maximums Tesla has found when trying to achieve true autonomy. This time around though, Elon has been a bit less public about their announcements, but continues to say they will achieve self-driving safer than a human this year. He wants to roll out the FSD beta to everyone this year, and when speaking at that FT conference, he said, quote, at this point, I think we are no longer trapped in a local maximum. And obviously I could be wrong, but I think we are quite close to achieving self-driving at a safety level that is better than a human. And it appears, my best guess, is that we'll get there this year. We're really not far from it. He reiterated that the best way to understand how it's going is to join the beta program or to watch videos of those using the beta. You can look at the progress over time and see how significant it is. There is significant progress to see, but I still find the prediction to be quite bold given how many scenarios the FSD beta needs to operate in. Also, it's not as simple to join the FSD beta program as he says. Either way, Elon saying that they are no longer trapped in a local maximum means that the progress we've been seeing should only speed up. The rate of improvement for FSD should get faster and faster in the next few months, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. Regarding software in general, Elon reiterated that he's confident they will not only maintain their software lead, but extend it into the future. Next up today, we talked in my last video about Tesla's environmental impact report. There was a ton of information on this 144 page report, but one specific piece has to do less with preserving the air, but preserving water. Factories are big water users, so for Giga Texas, Tesla has a plan to help reduce consumption. They said, quote, we are planning to capture at least 25% of roof runoff, 1 million square feet, to a central underground storage system within Gigafactory Texas. Rainwater will be recycled for use in the cooling of manufacturing equipment. In an average year, such systems should save an estimated 7.5 million gallons of potable city water. 
This is a big piece that Tesla has been dealing with over in Berlin. So with this system they are planning in Giga Texas, they could likely implement similar in Berlin. Ultimately, this adds to Tesla's overall sustainable outlook, which they trace all the way back to the mines in this report. There is clearly still carbon usage when making a vehicle, but they say for the future that, quote, it is possible to fully decarbonize the manufacturing and use of EVs. Great to see Tesla innovating and making a serious effort in all aspects of sustainability, not just carbon usage. Last up today, a few updates about other automakers. VW, who Elon Musk recently talked about doing better than most making EVs, is planning to spin off a new EV company centered around off-road vehicles. They will resurrect the nameplate from the International Harvester Scout for a Jeep-like off-road vehicle. It would be a very similar niche to the Rivian R1T. Rumors of this resurrection surfaced in 2021, but now sources at VW have said that the plan is going forward to make Scout SUVs and trucks in the US by 2026, eventually targeting 250,000 units per year. Concept drawings initially released from a source and now from VW show their concepts that are remarkably similar to the R1S and R1T. Now they have been officially released and the official Volkswagen newsroom release says, quote, Volkswagen Group will launch an all electric pickup and rugged SUV in the United States. The decision of the board of management was confirmed today by the supervisory board of the Volkswagen Group. For schedule, they confirm that, quote, the first prototypes are to be unveiled next year and production is scheduled to start in 2026. As far as Scout being its own brand, VW said, quote, the company we will establish this year will be a separate unit and brand within the Volkswagen Group to be managed independently. This is awesome to see from VW, and I'm very excited to see other plans for electric SUVs and trucks. However, 2026 is still a ways away. For Hyundai, they have confirmed plans for a new electric car factory in the US. They said, quote, we are excited to announce a new EV plant plan in the United States soon, but we do not have details to share at this stage. Canoe has reported over a $125 million net loss for Q1. Overall, they are not doing well and said, quote, we are reporting that there is substantial doubt about the company's ability to continue as a growing concern. It could mean the end of these crazy concept vehicles, but I hope it's not. I really want to see them succeed, but we'll see. Rivian announced their earnings, and one particularly interesting slide said that, quote, we have optimized our product roadmap and associated operating expenses to ensure we have a path to launch R2 in Georgia in 2025 with our current cash on hand. The R2 platform is expected to be smaller and more affordable, allowing them to make a cheap EV. Very exciting. That's all the latest Tesla news for today. So in the meantime, if you want to see my true cost of ownership after two years with the Model Y, you can check that out linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.